night, just two days after Election Day in 2020, before the results of the presidential election had even been called, President Donald Trump's chief of staff received a text message laying out a very detailed scheme for keeping Donald Trump in power. That text was from Donald Trump's son, Don Jr., and it described in detail a plot to use Republican legislatures to keep Trump in office, regardless of the actual vote counts. And if that failed, Republicans in Congress could keep Trump in power. The description pretty much matches up exactly with the scheme that Trump and his allies did then try to carry out by trying to replace Biden electors with fake Trump electors in states that Joe Biden won. Well, today, the committee investigating the deadly January 6th attack released the transcript of its interview with Donald Trump Jr. And Donald Trump Jr. told the committee he doesn't remember where the idea came from. Quote, question, is that something that you wrote or did you cut and paste that from somebody else? Don Jr., I imagine I cut and paste it from somewhere. Question, who wrote this? Don Jr., I don't know. Question, do you at least have a sense of who it could be within a universe of people? Don Jr., I don't know. There was a lot, a lot, a lot that the former president's son claimed he did not know during his interview. Same for Trump advisor Stephen Miller. The transcript of his interview with the January 6th committee was also released today. He refused to discuss any of his conversations with Donald Trump, but he did say that to this very day, he believes that Donald Trump won the 2020 election. Also released today, the transcript of the committee's interview with Doug Mastriano. He's the failed Republican candidate for governor in Pennsylvania. That transcript is short because Doug Mastriano never actually spoke. His lawyer berated the committee as illegitimate, and then he and Doug Mastriano left. There's also this from Melania Trump's former chief of staff, describing what she heard from people in the White House about Donald Trump on January 6th, quote, that he was sitting in the dining room and he was just watching it all unfold. And that a couple of his comments, some of his comments were that these people looked very trashy, but also look at what fighters they were. I don't know if he expected them to be wearing full suits of like Roman armor, and that would have made them not trashy, but he did feel that they looked trashy but he loved how they were fighting for him. Now, this batch of almost 20 transcripts is just the latest release from the January 6th committee as it winds down its work. And another sign that the committee's work is coming to a close. Today, the committee formally withdrew its subpoena to former President Trump, acknowledging that it would be moot once the committee ceases to exist next month. So we really are in the final days of the January 6th congressional investigation. The new Republican-led Congress will be sworn in next week, so whatever material the committee still wants to get out into the public record, they have a very limited and shrinking window in which to do it. Politico's Kyle Cheney points out today that 119 transcripts have now been released, totaling 12,898 pages. He adds this, quote, only 900 to 1,000 more transcripts to go. Joining us now is Kyle Cheney, senior legal affairs reporter for Politico. Luke Broadwater, congressional reporter for The New York Times, and Joyce Vance, former U.S. attorney and an MSNBC legal analyst. Thank you all so much for being here. Luke and Kyle, I know you've got stories out tonight on this latest transcript dump. We've pulled out some things that are just shocking, although that we're going to need a new word for shocking. But Luke, take me through what you pulled out as highlights in your story. Oh, sure. I mean, there's lots of things. I, I think you could start with uh, Ms. Grisham if you wanted to. I mean, uh, the, the comments you just highlighted were, were quite interesting about Donald Trump's demeanor, of course. Uh, but I also thought it was interesting how she said that Melania Trump had grown very distrustful of Mark Meadows and of the lawyers who were surrounding Donald Trump, uh, particularly Rudy Giuliani, Sidney Powell, uh, Jenna Ellis, and she names them all. And so the first lady was expressing to her that she did not trust these people and who did not want them around the president. Um, clearly, Mr. Trump had other ideas, and he uh, kept these people around him. And in fact, they encouraged him a great deal as he was uh, fighting the election results. Um, you know, there, 
a number of the transcripts stick out stick out for how pugnacious the uh, the interviewees were. Stephen Miller, he sort of spars with the committee for some 200 pages. I mean, he's criticizing every question that's asked of him. He's fighting with the investigators verbally. And you can see just how much trouble the investigators had trying to elicit information from some of these individuals. But there is a lot of there are a lot of new details and more color and more revelations in these transcripts.